Okay, hello Year 12. Um, I'm just going to start you guys off with connected bodies, gain an understanding of the topic. And I'm going to use example 11 from page 169 to introduce you to this topic. Now, when you have a connected body, there are only two kinds of questions that you might face. You might have something like a car towing a trailer. As you see here, you might have a five kilogram car towing a three kilogram trailer. Or you might have a lift problem where you've got someone in a lift which is being raised or lowered. Now look at that example in my next video. But for now, I just want you to talk you through the example on page 169. Now, when you've got a connected body, we first need to put our forces onto our diagram to make it easy for us to understand. Now, if we read through the question, it says you've got two particles, P and Q. P is the five kilogram block, Q is the three kilogram block, and they're connected by a light and extensible string. Now, light and inextensible means that we ignore the string's mass because it's light, and inextensible means that the force in the string, which is tension, is constant throughout and it doesn't change as we increase the load. Now, the question says that particle P is being pulled by a horizontal force of magnitude 40 newtons. I'm going to do this in pink. So 40 newtons. Now, think about this logically. When you've got a car towing a trailer, it's the car that produces the force. This 40 newton only acts on the five kilogram block. So what is it that makes the three kilogram block move in this case? Well, it's the string or the tension in the string. The car is pulled by this force in the string. Now, the five kilogram block feels resistance in the three kilogram block from behind. And we get these two tensions. Now, you'll see here, this tension in green only acts on the three kilogram block. It's the force that's pulling the three kilogram block forward. The five kilogram block has this tension behind, which is the force it needs to pull this from behind. So like that resistance, you're trying to drag someone from behind, they're gonna cause resistance. It also tells us in the question that particle P has a resistance which is frictional of 10 newtons and the particle Q has a resistance of six newtons. So we have this here. Now, technically, this is actually on solid ground, so we should actually have the ground in there as well, like this. And because these particles are resting on the ground, they are also going to have their weight and reaction forces associated to them. So we can see here, I've got my 5G for the weight on the five kilogram, my 3G weight on the three kilogram, and then reaction forces of P and Q. Now from this, because there's no acceleration in this upward direction, in this upward direction, these forces must be balanced three, G must be equal to RQ and 5G must be equal to RP. Now it tells you in this question that we need to work out the acceleration, which is going to be to the right and the tension. So we're going to look at how we solve a question like this now. Now for connected bodies, there is one key element to take into place. And that is you can either look at the whole system as one big particle, or you can look at each system separately. So you can look at the five kilogram block separately to the three kilogram block. And the way I show this is via these symbols here. We can either do F equals MA on the whole system. We can do F equals MA on the three kg block, and F equals MA on the 5 kg block. Now, why would we do one rather than the other? Well, we currently have two unknowns. You've got the two tensions, 
and the acceleration. Now, if I did F equals MA on just the three kilogram block, I'd have this unknown of tension here, and I'd also have an acceleration because this is all accelerating to the right. In the same way, if I did F equals MA just on the five kilogram block, I'd have this tension from behind and acceleration as well. So when I do F equals MA on the whole system, we can see here that if I've got tension to the right and tension to the left, which are exactly the same, they will cancel out. So for part A, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do F equals MA on the whole system to the right. And what that means is any force to the right is positive and any force to the left is negative. So this would be 40 plus T minus T minus 10 minus six is equal to the collective mass of the whole system is five kilograms plus three kilograms, which is eight times by A. Now we know the T is gonna cancel out. So this is gonna be 40 minus 10, that's 30. 30 minus six is 24. 24 is equal to 8a, so a is equal to 3 meters per second squared. And that is part a completely done. Normally worth about three to four marks in an exam. So done part a. Part b is asking us to work out the tension. Now, we can't do f equals ma on the whole system now because we know the tensions will cancel out. So we now look at F equals MA on one of the systems only. My advice is to do it on Q because it will make P be positive. So it'll make T be positive and that's going to the right. So when we do F equals MA, we only look at the forces now on Q. And we can see the forces to the right are T, the forces to the left are minus six is equal to the mass of Q is simply just three and A. Now, we worked out the acceleration previously is equal to three. So all we're doing is because A is now equal to three, we substitute that in over here, we get T is equal to three times by three, plus six, and that gives us T is equal to nine plus six is 15 Newtons. And if we think about that logically, 15 is greater than the six, which is gonna cause that to pull off in that direction. And here the 10 plus the 15, the 25 is less than the 40, so that resistance is gonna be here, but it's still gonna be less than the 40, meaning this is gonna accelerate in this direction as well. So what we've done here, if we did F equals MA on the whole system, that's completely fine. We then did F equals MA just on Q to find the value of tension. Now I said we could have done it on P instead, so I'm gonna do that underneath just to double check. If we did F equals MA on P, the five kilogram block to the right, our positive force would have been 40, our negative force would have been the 10, and the tension is equal to the mass of this is five and the acceleration is three. That gives us 40 minus 10 minus T is equal to 15. And if we rearrange that, we get 40 minus 10 minus 15 is equal to T, taking this to this side and this to this side. Finally, giving us T is equal to 40 minus 10, 30, 30 minus 15, 15. Newtons. So it did not matter what we did F equals MA on at the end. I hope that's helped. If you have any questions, you can always contact me.